Welcome to Knit Together with Kim and Donna. I'm Donna. And I'm Kim. And we are in our absolute favorite local yarn shop, Pick Up Every Stitch in Mount Kisco, New York. Yes. And we are best friends knitting and living in Westchester. Mm-hmm. County. Yep. Yeah. New York. New York. Did you say that? <laughs> I don't know. Well, Mount Kisco, New York, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so this is a... Um, obviously, a real yarn shop. And I guess we're supposed to maybe have a snowstorm on Saturday. Right. So they were really busy today because, of course, with your bread and your milk and your wine, you need yarn. You need yarn. Right. So if the phone rings <laughs> or somebody comes up and frantically, they're closed now, but if somebody's frantically pounding on the door, I must, think we'll open must it. Must have yarn. Oh, my goodness. I have yarn fur on my face and it's itchy. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not going to cut it out. That's Occupational just be... hazard. Oh, oh, it's tickling my nose. Anyway, <laughs> go ahead. So, we um, are so excited that you're joining us either for the first time or again. Mm -hmm. And For episode four, did you think we'd make it this far? No. And I didn't have any idea that we'd have as many subscribers as we do. We're, we're from, getting close to 5,000 subscribers. From all corners of the world. And our sock video that aired, it'll be two weeks ago on Friday, mm -hmm. has so many comments and I have to say what a pleasure it was to read every single one of them and just learn more about different processes and different techniques and you guys had more tips and tricks than I did. So it was great. I just thought it was fabulous. And you said you might want to do, we, we really don't plan. No. We don't rehearse. <laughs> we don't plan. No. Um, my cheat sheet says what I'm going to talk about, but not what she, I don't even know what she's going to talk about. So. Um, you did mention, though, that you would love to do a follow-up. So I was thinking maybe in February. This will air February 4th. Today mm -hmm. will be February 4th. Um, maybe we could do a socks viewer tips and tricks. Yes, exactly, because there were so many. Yeah. And Great. thank you for responding. Jonna really responded to 99.999% of the comments. First of all, and there I were hundreds. Yes. <laughs> I don't knit socks, really. I mean... This is it. Well, for and now. I enjoyed every minute of it. Yes. I just enjoyed yes. hearing about other people's experience. Mm -hmm. What needles you use, and, you know, yeah. toe up, top down, which was a, a topic that we didn't cover. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, yeah so and different kinds of heel constructions, and. Um, yeah, different needles. Did you say that already? Uh huh. And DK weight yarn and worsted weight yarn. Mm -hmm. And some people are trying socks for the first time. Some people um, tried socks and didn't like it, but then are inspired to try again. And some so. people found the video maybe a little confusing. I think I think this one woman she said she's knitted socks. I'm assuming her whole life. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you already have a way that you love, don't change it. If, right. it, if it ain't if it ain't broke, don't is that how you say don't it? it? Don't fix it. <laughs> um, and yeah, so, and it wasn't meant to be a beginner, necessarily a beginner. No, or a tutorial. Right. So, right. yeah, I did my best. Just Jonna's favorite knitting philosopher. Tips and tricks. Tips and tricks yeah. about sock knitting. <laughs> but I learned so much, so it was great, and I'm really appreciative of all the comments, so thank you. Um, and one of the comments, a woman said that she knits maybe 25 pairs of socks a year and gives them to people on the bus, people... In the grocery store. Really? I yeah. missed that one. Yeah. Wow. So how lovely. inspirational was that? It almost yeah. made me cry, actually. We yeah. got such really touching. Heartfelt. And, yeah, heartfelt stories about how knitting is comfort. And, um, yeah. People just, share really personal things, too. Really about do. Um, members of their family who have passed away. Mm -hmm. And, you know, knitting their best, like, John and I are best knitting friends. And a woman recently posted that her best knitting friend, I think, had passed away. Mm. Uh, and so I can imagine, I mean, that uh, she's lonely, and so she feels like she has two new knitting friends, and you right, do. You right. do. Um, I'm really bad with names, but eventually I'm hoping to get to know all your names. And hopefully once this COVID nightmare is gone, we can start going to knitting events and mm -hmm. meet people face-to-face -face and in person. Mm -hmm. That would be really fun. Oh, speaking of knitting events, I told my husband, I said, I got invited to my first knitting event. And I said, it's a QA. and a and he was like, oh, wow, you know, where is it? So, well, actually, my mom, my mom lives in a retirement community, and they, would, they wanted me to, next time I go to Texas, to come for half an hour and answer knitting questions. That's so awesome. I'm like, wait, I didn't hear about this. I like, know. Why wasn't I invited? I know. No, she just texted me. <laughs> because I don't go to Texas. Yeah. So That is yeah. so fun. I mean, I'm, I'm not an expert, as we all know, but mm -hmm. I'm happy to sit there. And, you know, they have a little knitting group and a crochet group, and it'll just be fun. 
That's great. Yeah. You definitely have to. I think to my parents, I'm a, I'm a local celebrity. <laughs> That's fun. <laughs> That's great. Then yeah. you should definitely have somebody who can take pictures. Yeah. So we can post them and share For them. For sure. And speaking of that, we haven't really talked about it much, and it's not going to happen soon, obviously, with COVID and everything. But um, if you saw on Instagram, I was out of town a couple weekends ago with my husband. We went to a tiny house resort, which is a little less than two hours away from here. And it's um, – <laughs> somebody – are you okay? Somebody <laughs> dropped something. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> Just the phone. Um, and we found this place, I think – We've stayed there even when it first opened. They have, I, I'm assuming, purchased an old campground, and they keep adding more and more tiny homes, and they're all different tiny homes, different layouts, different floor plan, different um, different amount of people can sleep in them. Some of them are larger tiny homes now, um, but we love them. They're, <laughs> they're not, not so they're tiny not, homes. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're really lug, my, like luxury tiny homes. Some of them have bathtubs in them, which I think is a luxury in a tiny home. <laughs> they have huge, you know, big screen TVs and things like that. So we went up there, and um, my intention was just to knit. I didn't want to do anything else. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to – I said, told my husband I'm not going to hike. <laughs> we're not – I actually made all of our food ahead of time, and we brought it up, and then we – because we're kind of foodies. So we don't do fast food. Usually we'll cook in the tiny home, but I didn't even want to cook. I just wanted to knit. So I cooked everything at home. We brought it up in little containers and then used the microwave. It was heavenly. Um, but anyway, so I was posting pictures of my, my knitting. I had finished this sweater up there and a hat. And the owner of the tiny home resort messaged me and she said, Oh my goodness, you're so talented. That's amazing. We should do a knitting group here. And I went, <laughs> that would be awesome. You mean like a retreat or something? And so we haven't really talked about it yet. I mean, I just got back last week. Um, but that's something that maybe when COVID's done, we can think about yeah. is um, doing a maybe an annual knitting retreat up at the tiny home, tw tiny, tiny house resort. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, that was really, really, really exciting. How fun would that be? Oh my, yeah. So fun. Because especially if we do it, I'll obviously ask her when it's like a light season and mm -hmm. we can do it when it's not so busy. But there's so many beautiful outdoors. It's right on, along the Catskill Creek. Mm. There's a waterfall nearby. We could do like a knitting hike. Fun. Um, I thought we could have like a basic hat project. If there's beginners, we mm -hmm. could have a super basic hat project people could do. And then every year add one element to that basic hat pattern. I don't know. Still still talking about it, but it would be really fun. Well, mom would love that. So. <laughs> Mom wants to go. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, so fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, another thing I did <laughs> on our way back, we were halfway home an hour on the way, and they messaged us that we forgot our pillows. We always bring our favorite pillows. I hate it when that happens. Oh, so then I thought, I had to get my husband home for work. I thought, oh, should I go back and get them now? Anyway, you don't need to hear all this. But um, we, ended up, yarn. <laughs> we ended up not going that day. We went that next weekend um, up to pick up the pillows, and, um, and that weekend that we were there, there is a yarn shop nearby, one of my other very favorite yarn shops, but I didn't go because I didn't want to go anywhere. Um, but when we picked the pillows up, I did go. So I went to Perfect Blend Yarn and Tea Shop in Saugerties, New York. Saugerties is the best little town, such a destination. Um, and so we went there and I saw Mary. Uh, she's awesome. And I've actually been pining away over some yarn I saw there last year. And uh, do I have it? Oh, I think it's buried. I'll show it later. Um, and I said, you know, I've been thinking about it since I saw it a year ago and I wanted to buy it didn't have a pattern she suggested a pattern so of course I bought the yarn and so it's now added to my yarn and pattern stash right so fun <laughs> but then my husband when we drove over one of the bridges we noticed that the Hudson River is completely frozen is it I wondered it's Gorgeous. Really? I mean, beautiful. And parts of it looked turquoise. Not down where we live. Because it was a blue, 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 turquoise, blue sky, and it was reflecting off the ice. Oh, wow. And he wanted to take pictures. So then we, we went to Saugerties Lighthouse. If you've never been there, you have to walk there. Um, it's a little, like, 10-minute hike, walk, and it was icy. The, even It's actually a bed and breakfast. And so when you stay there, wow. you have to bring your suitcases. You have to walk 10 minutes with your suitcases. And you stay in the lighthouse? Yes. Oh, wow. There's only two rooms. The main floor, well, you can't go in the lighthouse unless you're a guest. Mm -hmm. The main floor is the public area with the kitchen and place to cook. And then the top floor, there's an east and a west room, I think. Oh, wow. 
Fun. Or a North and a South. What a unique something. getaway. That oh, my goodness. It's amazing. But it books way, way, way in advance. I think right now they're not taking reservations because um, of COVID. They're honoring existing reservations. But it's ma amazing. So you walk on this path. You get out there. It's surrounded by docks. It's basically in the middle of the Hudson River. And so he was able to take pictures. And I actually brought my yarn I had just purchased and I took beautiful pictures of the oh, yarn yeah. <laughs> on the dock uh, that was fun and then and then we came home but that was really cool oh before we continue and move on to what we're wearing and everything yeah. I wanted to talk about this bag I got for a friend oh. it's not you I'm sorry but <laughs> another friend no I do have other friends <laughs> um, of course you do she's everywhere we go someone recognizes you oh you're funny yeah well when you we're at a nursery school for 20 years, right. and you drive a flower beetle, and you have purple and hair. hair. People yeah. remember you. That's right. So um, when we went to Westport Yarns to see um, Katie of Katie's Bags, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to buy like a custom bag for my friend. Oh, um, wow! And so Katie she made, made this. She made oh, this. Wow. She sent me uh, fabric options. Look at that zipper. It's an I know it's a new design. <laughs> I think it's more of a tote bag. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it has a rainbow zipper, which I don't think you'll yeah, you can that's see. So cool. But isn't that neat? Yeah. But it's just a big zipper on the top, mm -hmm. and then a big empty space inside. Oh, so wow. I love, love, love this bag. And she did all the quilting herself. Wow. There were all these different a bundle of all these different fabrics, and she that's great. Uh, quilted it. So it's fully quilted on the front, and then has this nice little stripe on the back. Mm -hmm. And I think my friend's gonna love it. Gorgeous. I think I'm gonna give it to her for her birthday. Aww. So, yeah, I think awesome. it's really pretty. It matches my sweater. Yeah, we'll put a link to Katie's um, shop, Etsy shop. In the, yes, in absolutely. The box. Yeah. yeah, so you can go on there and order. And um, I don't know. I mean, I know her personally, so that maybe that's why she did a custom bag. I don't mm -hmm. want to offer her services for custom bags, <laughs> but um, it was worth it to me. It was for, it. I'm not even going to say who it's for, because she might watch this, but anyway. <laughs> so I just wanted to talk about that bag. All right. So what are you wearing? I am wearing um, something that wasn't even on my 2022 must knit. Actually, I rewatched episode three a little bit, so like you I said, <laughs> so I would know what I <laughs> talked it's, about. It's, it's been a while. <laughs> and I had talked about how I went to the Clinton Hill Cashmere trunk show here. I bought yarn to knit my bro my brother. I do have a brother. My <laughs> husband a hat. I did knit it for Christmas. Um, and then to knit my friend Elise a hat, I did that. And I talked about how I wanted to knit a, a cashmere sweater, but I couldn't afford it at the moment. And then Felicia, the whole thing with the layaway. Mm -hmm. So when I came back to get the gray, I don't remember why I came back here. I mean, I always come here. I, I bought one ball of the blue to swatch. It was before Christmas. And then um, I left the rest here with Felicia. And then I swatched and I just fell in love with it. So I came back on Christmas Eve and bought all the yarn. <laughs> I had bought everybody else their presents. I had a little extra money. So I bought it nice. and I knitted it. And I absolutely love it. It's from the Clinton Hill Cashmere. Um, it's called The Collection. And I mentioned it uh, in a recent video. There's um, uh, men's and women's sweaters, just a basic crew neck, cardigan, uh, crew neck sweater like this, and beanies, uh, and also for children. And so I knitted the women's, the largest, I think I knitted the largest size of the women's sweater. It's top down. I'm pretty sure it started with right, a one by one rib mm -hmm. and raglan. And uh, it knitted really fast. I mean, I was busy, so I had some delays just because I was busy, but when I'm knitting, it knitted really fast. It's um, Clinton worsted. Hill Cashmere, yes, yeah. bespoke. It's a worsted, but it's like a heavy worsted too. It's mm -hmm. more like a worsted Aran kind mm -hmm. of. Um, and so it knitted normally. And then there's this unusual, I've never done this, underarm shelf thing. Instead of when you divide for the sleeves and the body, instead of doing like a backwards loop cast on or all the different ways you can do it, mm -hmm. she actually had you do a provisional, mm -hmm. like a, a I mean, I did a crocheted, I don't know if she suggested, mm -hmm. provisional cast on. And then when you get to the underarm, you knit from those provisional stitches. So there's no seam in the underarm. Not that there really is a seam if you pick up the stitches. No. Um, wow. And then you knit down from that. And then when you do the sleeves, you open up the other side of the provisional wow. and you go the other way. Um, I did it. I 
didn't love it. <laughs> I, I didn't see the need for it, really. Mm -hmm. I'm perfectly fine with just picking up stitches. It's under my armpit. Nobody's going to see it anyway. It didn't make for less hole, like the, the mm -hmm. weird holes, mm -hmm. really. Um, yeah, so I didn't love it. But I do try to do what the designer asks for because it helps me learn things. Yeah. Um, after I've knitted something once, then I might modify it. But Or if I try it a few times and I can't get it to work, mm -hmm. then I might. But anyway, other than that, straight down. Um, I knitted it... I took no notes on this. Oh my goodness. I knitted it with a size 11 needle. Wow. I can't remember what Felicia said. She knitted hers. Nine, maybe? Because you're a tight knitter. Eight. You yeah. Oh, wow. I'm a tight knitter, so I went up. Wow. And also, Felicia suggested that I not go down a needle size for the ribbing, and I'm so happy. It's mm -hmm. really, I mean, it, it probably just looks like a sack here. Um, I wasn't going to block it, like wet block it, because it was perfect. It didn't even look like it needed to be wet blocked. Mm -hmm. And I wore it every single day until two days ago. Then I thought, oh, maybe for the video shoot, I should at least block wash it, right? Mm -hmm. So I did, and I have to say, it grew, but in a good way. Mm -hmm. I like it better mm -hmm. now than before I blocked it. The sleeves grew. I wanted it to be like that kind of sweatshirt, cozy. Mm -hmm throw it on every day and it's exactly what it is and um, it fits me perfectly it stops right where I want it to stop it's big and roomy I, I'm, I love the ribbing too it's beautiful <sighs> it's so beautiful and I really do want to put it on every day I have to force myself to pick up a different sweater right <laughs> that's how much I love it so um, yeah did I talk about everything I think I did I made no modifications oh well, actually I did make a little shorter mm. it, yeah I, did she have a cropped version I can't remember no, but it it goes like down by your bum, and I didn't want it like that, so I made it a little bit shorter uh -huh. than that, and I it's my new favorite sweater. So I'm sorry if it's boring, it's blue, it looks like a, a sack, but it's a gorgeous, beautiful, expensive sack. <laughs> it's cozy. It's so cozy, yeah. And so. we've been having really, really cold weather here, so, yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I'm wearing the Love Note by Tin Can Knits, and... I actually don't wear this very often, and I, I really don't know why. It fits fine. I love the color. I'm happy with it. Yeah, I'm not sure why I don't grab grab it very often. But anyway, um, this is knit in the Periwinkle Sheep Silky Singles, and their Wolk, which is their uh, silk mohair in the color Silver Lining. And I thought, I don't know, I just went through this. Maybe it's because it's purple. I don't wear a lot of purple, but I just thought, oh, I have gray hair. I should knit something purple. So I think that was my my thinking. And this is this is a very popular pattern. Oh, well, people Ooh. say, is that the love note every time you wear right, it? Right, right. So and it was a it was a great knit. It was pretty quick. It does have a provisional cast on, which in hindsight I I wouldn't do. I would just go ahead and cast on the number of stitches in the ribbing and not do the provisional cast on um, because. My, so if you have a provisional cast on and then I knit the ribbing and then I cast off, the cast off is actually a little bit snug. So it's fine. It goes over my head. I just have to take my glasses off. <laughs> <laughs> this was back in the day when, um, you know, I wasn't paying attention to how I, how I cast things off. So the, the cuffs are a little tight, but, um, but nothing, nothing bad. So. Yeah, um, I knit it as written. I have the high-low hem, so it's a little bit um, longer in the back, so there's short rows in the back. And, yeah, I would, if I did it again, I would use a German twisted cast on. And skip it's a little stretchier, all. right? Definitely a little stretchier, so. I just yeah. love how the skin shows through. Yeah. You're obviously wearing a matching I camisole. Am. I am, from Ann Taylor, I think, my yes. favorite. We got lots of questions on camisole, so I usually buy mine at Ann Taylor. Yeah. That's great. It's beautiful. I'm so Thank happy you. you wore it. Thank you. <laughs> so we were on this, um, I mean, we were trying to get all the Christmas knits done, and so there's this flurry of finished objects towards the end of the year, mm -hmm. and then now I feel like I've only got one finished object to share. Well, you're working on big projects, though. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So do you have finished objects? Do I have finished objects? Yeah. Oh, now you, you just picked go. up your knitting? No, I'll, I'll go. You're knitting. No, I can go. Let me talk about this nightmare. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, in episode three, uh, and it was maybe going to be a Christmas project or an after Christmas project, was going to knit my mom the mohair ombre blanket shawl. And um, actually, in episode three, I'm knitting on it. And I did work on it for a while. Um, 
And then I started to look at mine and um, they have a sample here in the shop, which is what I fell in love with. And mine was not looking like the one in the shop. And I had done all the preparation I talked about. I had cut all my little fringes ahead of time. Which was not fun. Because again, I said you knit until you finish with that color yarn. So if there's anything, any yarn you need at the end, you have to get it ready. Mm -hmm. And then I, um, this is for the crochet between the fringe and the scarf. I got everything ready. And I started knitting with the first color. And um, it's beautiful. And I think also in one of our videos. I can't remember. I took a picture of it and I said, does anybody notice anything wrong with this or two things wrong with it, I guess, or whatever. One was there's no needle in it because I've taken it off the needles and it's, it's going to be frogged. So we also recorded a video. I could do it right now. At least it's mohair. It's frogging really easily. Is it? It is. Look because at that. I've heard you can put it in the freezer. Look, look. Wow. So easy. Um, Basically, I don't even know if I can get a good picture of it, but it's not doing the ombre thing. Each color should ombre, and then there's three colors, and then, so all together there's like six ombre colors, right? But this one was not ombre. This one looks very ombre on this ball, and so does this, but this was not, it just looks mottled. You really can't see. I don't even know if you, I can get a good picture of it. So I brought it here to the shop and Felicia agreed with me. It doesn't look like the shop sample. So we sent pictures to um, Art Yarns who created the yarn and the pattern, I think. And she said, actually the yarn that I, the, the, the shop sample here was actually knitted with six different mm. skein colors. And that's why the ombre is so evident. And so then I think after the fact, they created these three balls that are already ombre to make it come out, you know, similar to this, the, the one that's here, but it won't be exact. And it isn't, and I just really don't like it. Um, so anyway, I'm ripping it out. And I don't really know what, I might eventually, because I love the one here, so I might buy the kit to make the real mm -hmm. one. Um, but yeah, this was definitely disappointing. Knitting the yarn was beautiful, and now that I'm <laughs> ripping it out, I haven't ripped it out yet, but it's beautiful. It rips out really easily. Wow. Um, but I knitted a lot on it, so it makes me sad. But um, anyway, so that was definitely a little disappointing, but it also freed me up to knit other stuff for myself, because that would have taken a while. Right, because you would have been knitting on that and not... I know, this. I wouldn't have done this. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so that was that. But Art Yarns got right back to us, and they explained. And so um, when I maybe maybe my mom's birthday is in August, maybe I'll buy the kit and make it for that. Yeah. I also, they'll have yarn to make her two other shawls. So I don't know. We'll see. But um, it's a beautiful blanket shawl, but not this yarn doesn't match the one that I saw. So that's it. A little disappointing. That's okay. <laughs> you know, like I always say, sometimes. You know, yarn and a pattern just don't make an object. Don't like you said in the last, they don't make, they a, make baby. a baby. Which I don't know. Is really that okay funny. To say? <laughs> yeah, I didn't get it at first, but uh, you know, and actually, and, and once I realized this, I put it away. That's why I didn't even talk about it in the works in progress or UFOs because it's now not even in anything because mm -hmm. it's not going to be anything. Right. Um, but when I got I'm it out on. today to bring it, like talking about it makes me sad again. Mm. It's silly. It's just knitting. But anyway, okay. Do you want to go next? Sure. So I have been wearing this ranunculus mm. by Midori Hirose almost every day, and I love it. Oops, there's gray hair in it, sorry. Um, yeah, we showed this. I knit this really half for our ranunculus episode, which was a couple episodes ago, and half because I already had the yarn and stash, and I had seen another podcaster make a black one and I just thought, oh, that looks so elegant and beautiful. I'm going to do that. So I was definitely motivated by our binoculars episode to make it. And I love it. I, I've worn it, oh, I don't know, 10 times. Easy. That's like me with this. Yeah. It's very sweatshirty. It is made in Monostel Uruguay um, silk blend, which is um, a single ply. So it is pilling a little bit, but that's okay. We have a gleaner, so we'll just... Sweaters pill. Yep. You can you buy know. a sweater at Lord & Taylor, the most expensive and sweater. It's, it's going to pill. it's so, so soft that I actually don't mind the pilling. So. <laughs> I mean, this is pilling, too, and I just made it, but it's fine. Yeah. So um, I knit it on a size 8, though, because I didn't want a ton of ease, and it has the perfect amount of ease. I couldn't actually tell you how many inches of ease, but a good 
probably a good 10 inches of meat. Oh, speaking still. of that, we got a lot of comments about the the Ravelry picture of the sweater because mm -hmm. it looks ginormous. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously knit in like a lace weight, right? It, really it looks like just a sheer. single strand of mohair. So, um, I, I know I didn't answer any of those either because you're really the ranunculus queen. So, <laughs> what, what? I don't know. You made, you made five or six of them, so. I mean, basically, one I did answer. I said, you know, um, what, I don't even remember what I said. Never mind. But um, you can make one and always gift it to somebody and just see, like, how it turns out for you. Mm -hmm. um, what's your? Did you give anybody recommendations about it? Well, and one of my tricks is to look at the pattern and look at the number of stitches on the body right after you put the sleeves on hold. That's what I told the person. And then compare your gauge yes. to the gauge in the pattern. Yeah. And then, you know, look at the number of stitches and then see how much ease you are going to have. And honestly, I have just, I've used... Just changed needle size, Yeah, right? just needle size. Mm -hmm. So I've used a 10, I've used a 7, I've used a, this, I've used an 8, I've mm -hmm. used a 9. So and that I is just, what I told the person. That's exactly yeah, what and this is a DK weight yarn. And yeah, it just But it's so, such a quick knit and it's so it beautiful. I think if I, it doesn't fit you, you will find somebody who would love to have this sweater because it's gorgeous. I actually added three inches to the body. It's still cropped-ish and I added six inches to the sleeve. It's so beautiful. Because I wanted long sleeves, but I wanted to be able to wear it in the winter. It's definitely a winter sweater. So yeah, love it. I absolutely love it. So that's my my one finished object nice for January nice yeah well I did something else that wasn't really on my list mm -hmm. um, we've talked before about um, our friend Jennifer um, Shields Tolland is that how you say her name mm -hmm. and she's JST knitwear designs and she used to come to our in-person knit together with Kim and John we met her at Vogue Knitting Live yes yeah? we met her at Vogue Knitting Live mm -hmm. at um, Josh Bennett's class mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, it's just so fun how everything like comes together um, in the knitting world but um, she contacted us because she was publishing a new hat and was doing kind of a weekend cow knit along a weekend um, knit along here it was Martin Luther King weekend a couple weekends ago and she wanted to know if we wanted to do it and um, I have honestly never done a knit along uh, Typically because I just, I know what I want to knit, and it's not what the knit along's for. <laughs> so uh, I usually don't do them. But that was, oh, that was actually the weekend I went up to the tiny house resort. Mm -hmm. So I I looked in my stash. I wound some yarn. wasn't really that excited about it. I knew I would finish this. The hat's a worsted weight hat. Um, and I thought, you know what? Maybe I'll just do it really fast. Because it could be a gift hat. Like, I could give it to somebody. Actually, you thought, maybe I'll just run to pick up every stitch and see what they have. Exactly. <laughs> so I did. The design is the Sea Spray hat. And again, it's um, Jennifer Shields Tolland or JST Knitwear Designs. And doesn't she have a cowl that either... Yes, she did the cowl things. first. Sea Spray cowl. Yes. Okay. Cowl as in C-O-W-L. And not as opposed to not the cow. K-A-L. K -A -L. K -A -L. <laughs> right. Um, so I... I came here and I was looking at, uh, you know, I just asked. Someone also commented, like, it's so funny that Kim has been knitting for so long, but she doesn't really know about yarn. And I just don't. I just don't care. <laughs> I pick out yarn. I mean, back when I started knitting, there weren't that many options, and acrylic was really in. Right. And so I probably knitted a lot of acrylic. Right. Um, and you're a project knitter. Yeah, so. and I, I buy yarn from nice shops, mm -hmm. and so, you know, I trust. I mean, I've bought yarn for less than $10, a skein or a hank, and then I've bought yarn for much more than that. You like to buy yarn in person. You like to touch it. Yeah, and if it, if it matches the project, I really don't care what's mm -hmm. in it. I usually literally come in with no idea, and I say to Karen or Felicia, I want to knit this. What are the options? And they show me. And I, I used to think... I quit my job right before COVID, and I thought, maybe I'll work at the yarn shop. But I couldn't, because I don't know anything about yarn. <laughs> so uh, people would walk in, and I'd say, I don't know. Oh, my goodness. So anyway, Felicia brought me right over to this um, to the worsted wall, and she showed me a few things. And then she showed me the seventh floor um, yarn, uh, yarn, and... I don't even remember. What Which I think is local to New York State. Is it? I think so, yeah. Um, and there are all these beautiful colors. And I'm looking at the colors thinking I could knit a hat for my husband. And all these like muted colors. But I kept looking at this highlighter yellowish green. <laughs> and I, I just couldn't resist. There was pink. I mean, all, so many beautiful colors. And so I chose this. 
And if I was going to do know that, there was a matching pom pom. I did not. If I, I, if I, um, I don't remember what I was saying, but um, yeah, I just if I was, oh, I know if I was going to knit a hat and it wasn't on my twenty twenty two schedule, I wanted to knit something super fun and happy and bright, and that's what I did. And the cow started that Friday at noon, and I didn't. I was working on this. I finished this Sunday morning. It was a three day weekend. I didn't start the hat until Sunday evening and I finished it Monday morning I, oh, literally wow. less than 24 hours oh, wow. yeah it was but again I wasn't doing anything else I wasn't doing laundry I was just sitting in a tiny house <laughs> and there was a snowstorm that morning but I love this hat one thing I love about it my first time ever doing a tubular cast on mm -hmm. and I was really tempted to not do it because everyone was talking about how fiddly it is I was really tempted to just do a regular long tail cast on and Jen says you can do that but I like to learn new things because mm -hmm. how can I say I like it or not unless I do it? So I did it and I love this tubular it's cast a on. It's beautiful, beautiful From edge. the first, just how it feels, how it, I mean, looks, yes, but how it feels. It's really stretchy. It's stretchy. I love it. And then this yarn, this might be my new favorite yarn. How it feels, how it felt in my hand knitting it. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. I, I want to find something else to knit with this yarn. It is so amazing. And it's basically knits and pearls, these patterns. And it, her hat doesn't have a pom-pom on it, but I put a pom-pom on it because I just thought, how fun. And today, my daughter Elena, who's here right now, she's like our camera helper and everything, <laughs> video shoot helper. Today, right before we came here, I said, your birthday's coming up. Do you like this hat? Do you want it? <laughs> And she put it on and she loved it. So it's going to be hers for her birthday. Um, and actually, the pom-pom makes it, um, there's a little too much room at the top. So we folded it. And because it's a, except I have to weave this end in better. But because it's a provisional cast on, it's totally reversible. So with it folded up like this, it just looked mm -hmm. so adorable on her. So it's going to be hers. So, oh, so I have a tip for you. Oh, no, what? No, it's fine. So she, she, the pom poms come with these ribbons, which I love better than snaps. Yeah, for sure. And so, I mean, I switch out my pom poms sometimes, or if I'm knitting a gift. So you I can take it off if you have to wash it, right? You, oh, for sure. But what I do to make your pom pom stand up and be real perky is I get a big button <gasps> and I put the ends of the ribbon through the holes in the button so that the pom pom is sitting on this little base this firm base and it makes you have a very perky pom-pom. So there you go. Tip, tip of the day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> None of my pom-poms are perky. Are perky. So yeah, that, that prevents the <laughs> flopping pom-pom. I mean, nothing I have or own or am is perky at this point, but <laughs> sorry, TMI. Um, <laughs> but if I can have a perky pom-pom, that's right. That's what I want. <laughs> easy fix. Easy fix. So just like the cheap, big plastic button, you know, that is so cool. Yeah. Wow. Did you think of that yourself, or did you hear it from somebody? No, I, I don't. I have no original ideas. <laughs> Very few. But do you any know. of us have any original ideas? Maybe some of us do. But anyway, yeah, but no, it's I'm beautiful. sure I love I, this hat. Yeah, I'm sure I heard somebody say it, or somebody told me about it. Yeah. So I'm really happy I knitted it. My first cow. I'm really happy. So that's my sea spray hat. And if I hadn't been obsessed with this project, I would have partaken but yeah oh I, and the color the color chartreuse i mean you probably could have guessed that but that's the color chartreuse it's beautiful yeah so um what's next do you have something else to talk about i don't i don't have any other finished objects um so on to whips sure okay so works in progress mm -hmm. i am completely obsessed with my current work in progress yay and i've done basically nothing else besides knit on this except I'm into a really good book, and so it's really competing. Those, the book and the knitting are book really book. competing. Um, if you've read Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett, it's the prequel to that. So it's called The Evening and the Morning. Oh, nice. Yeah, set in the Middle Ages. It's a quick read. Entertaining. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, I was watching Inga from, knitting, from the Knitting Traditions podcast, who she's just lovely. She lives on the west coast of Norway. She's a, a physician. If you haven't watched her, definitely check out her video. Uh, so she made a Nordiska. So this is a Nordiska by Caitlin Hunter. And this was already, I already owned the pattern. It was in my queue. And I saw her version and I thought, okay, I'm a better knitter now. I don't think I would have attempted this 
a couple of years ago, but I can do this, right? I can do this. It's so beautiful. I don't even want to knit. <laughs> so it's listen. a V-neck top down and it has these really beautiful two stitch cables in the raglan. We'll take a picture close up so that you can see better, but it yeah. reminds me of my C2 sweater. It How, does. Yeah. It's interesting. So the increases though, so of course I have to read like all the yeah, different project the notes too. and you know, see what everybody else said about knitting it before I started. Mm -hmm. And some people said, oh, I don't like the way that the increases don't mirror each other. And they're actually knit front backs. But you know what? I don't mind. And it makes the sweater the sweater. So I didn't want to change that. I've so, knit a lot of sweaters that are like that, and it doesn't bother me at all. No, it doesn't like, bother me at all. So I didn't, I really haven't altered much about this pattern except for number one, the gauge, and number two, I added about three inches to the body. So this color work is supposed to start one inch below the division for the mm. sleeves. Mm. And I knew I didn't want it that cropped, so I added three inches to the body before I started the I'm color I'm sorry, work. I'm so worried this is gonna fall uh, off the needle. <laughs> <laughs> this, But this yarn is super sticky and grippy, so it probably but it wouldn't even fall off. it doesn't feel scratchy. No, and it's gonna, I think it's gonna block up really soft. So this is Rama Phenolgarn. And I actually had to go, so the pattern calls for fingering weight. And I, I bought some beautiful Biche Bouche fingering weight. I was super excited to use it, great colors. And I could not get gauge for the life of me. I would have had to go up four needle sizes and mm. then I wouldn't have liked the fabric. Mm -hmm. So I could have cast it on, you know, the large with the smaller needles, but then I would have had a gazillion stitches on my needles. I just, I, I just didn't want to do it. So I did end up getting different yarn as one does. And this is actually very affordable Norwegian yarn, very rustic, hundred percent Norwegian wool. And my gauge is still off. So the gauge in the pattern, I think is 20 stitches for four inches and I'm at 23. So I actually just went up a size. So I'm knitting the medium, mm -hmm. hoping to get like a small. So I did the same thing with the sweater. I took the number of stitches in the bust and I plugged in my gauge, plugged in the pattern gauge to see the difference. And I'm still going to have a good 10, 12 inches of ease, which is what the pattern calls for. It's so, beautiful. And this, so I'm it's so a gray. Excited. It's gray. There's like a, what, what would you call that gold? Yeah, it's kind of, it's it's this color. And, and the Rama, a navy blue. Yeah, and a navy blue. The Rama, um, they don't have color names, only color numbers. So, so like brass or, and Ooh. this is this is in my Ravelry, so I do have, sorry, I have a plastic bag here. It's okay. Um, yeah. So beautiful. Oh my goodness. I love it. And it's just zipping along. Now, you know, once I got past the knitting it flat until the V, which is a little bit of a slog, but I couldn't wait to join it in the row mm. so I could just, you know, knit, knit, knit. It's so, so. beautiful. I love yeah. it. Yeah, so I don't have too many more rows on the body, maybe uh, 15 more rows on the body. Mm -hmm. And then I saw a bunch of comments about Sorry. there are only maybe five rows of ribbing at the bottom and People a lot of comments extra. about the ribbing flipping up because the memory of the stockinette, the stockinette wants to roll. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just not enough ribbing to lay mm -hmm. flat. So I'm gonna increase the ribbing on the bottom. And then I'm probably- I love a wide band of ribbing though. Yeah. I think it looks really modern. Right. So I have no problem with doing a little bit extra ribbing and I'll just see how it goes. Um, and then I'm, so Inga on her sweater, she didn't do the sleeve decreases and she made her sleeves much longer. The pattern has like a three quarter length sleeve, kind of like this, kind of like a love note. A lot more color work on the sleeves, which I'm looking forward to. And but you don't like small circumference color work. I don't. But these, drive you but these have these sleeves are like eighty something okay. stitches. Okay. Yeah, it's gonna be fine. I'll probably do it on a sixteen inch circular, so okay. we'll we'll be set. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not like my gold wing, which I really struggled with that yeah. small sleeve, but that was my fault. I didn't go up a needle size. Oh, I did go up a needle size for the color work. So I went up to a six. So this is on a five. I think it calls for a four, but it's there's no perfect. way I was going to get 20 stitches with fingering on a size four needle. Mm -hmm. So it's perfect. Yeah. I so if you do want to knit this, definitely pay attention to gauge. Oh, and you're using your, I am. I'm using my knitting barber cords. And I have to say that I do sweat every time I use these because I'm worried about it pulling off the tip of the needle. But the needle was small. It it's not like I'm using a size 11 needle. Yeah. So it, they worked fine. Yeah, it works great. Yeah. Nice. Um, I love it. I know. I can't wait to try it on. Yeah. I the, can't wait this to needle's not, not quite big enough for me to slip it over my head. But Beautiful. Yeah. Let me see if there's anything else I want It'll to say about this. It'll definitely be finished by the next episode. Yeah, so it definitely will because I am just highly motivated, which means I have not touched my letho 
And if you were here for episode three, you might remember that I did say I vowed to have it finished by this episode. Oh, did you? I don't And I didn't that. even bring it because I haven't even knit a stitch in it. So, yeah, the letho is definitely But this got, is worth it. It is so worth yes. it. So, yeah. And this was a, honestly, this is a pretty quick knit. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I'll pick up the letho. Nice. Before winter's over. Yeah. Love it. It's beautiful. Thank you. Yay. That's beautiful. Yep. So, um, I, I mean, I have two works in progress, really, besides my flower blanket, which will never get finished. Um, <laughs> but I have my socks. If we didn't have a different gauge, I wouldn't you help would you do that. flowers. Yeah. But yeah. It's I don't okay. I think it would work. Um, I'll do it. I think I said in a previous, in, in the whip and UFO thing that I'm probably going to have to just stop everything and finish it because I, I said if I, if I work on something else when I'm doing something else, I feel like I'm cheating on my projects. Right. So um, I haven't done much on my socks. Same thing with these. I think when I finish my Amina, <laughs> which I'm going to talk about now, then I'll just finish these socks really fast um, or before I'll I start. For you. <laughs> I totally will. Before I start something else. Yeah, you can. Um, so I'm going to talk about my Amina. I finally Hi. started it. Yay! Oh my gosh, this yarn is amazing. I'm so excited. That's so gorgeous. the Amina is in this book by Amy Gilles. Uh, it's a, a knitwear collection curated by Amy Gilles. She didn't design everything in it. Did she design anything in it? I don't, I don't know. even know. Um, but my design is by Sylvia Watts Cherry, who today I was actually messaging. She got right back to me. Not that I want everybody to message her. <laughs> We're all busy. But I had some questions. Um, so I've, I've um, posted pictures of it already. I'm doing the, the Amy Gilles version, which is, I don't know if I can find it. Um, you won't be able to see it. But I've, I have other pictures I'll post. So it has kind of a... In a way, like an argyle, in a way. Mm -hmm. Or harlequin. Harlequin, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, look to it. So, um, <laughs> right now I hate intarsia. Let me just tell you. I'm going to finish the sweater, but I hate intarsia. So it's knit in pieces flat. I finished the back, and here it is. And I did, I did steam it a little so that it would show up better. But this is the back. Look at how perfect that is. That is I mean, beautiful. It's so perfect. I can't even tell and you. And the fabric it made is just. Yeah, I love it. Your tension is so even and perfect. So, so um, I have to confess, I had just finished the sea spray hat before this, and I was really wanted to do a tubular cast on for this, but it's a two by two rib. Mm. So no tubular cast on. But I did the two by two rib. I didn't change anything. Um, I knitted straight up. It's basically a rectangle. Um, I don't even know that I realize that it isn't a set-in sleeve or anything. It's just basically a rectangle. There's mm -hmm. no um, shaping at all for the armhole. And then there's just a little shoulder shaping and the back of the neck. Um, I have to say, when I was steaming it today, I realized I think I dropped a stitch along an edge. Who cares? Um, I tried to pull it with a crochet hook up mm -hmm. and through, but... Mm -hmm. I think I had fudged it at the top because I had the wrong amount of stitches, but it's one stitch on this whole entire thing in the back. It doesn't really matter. And I love it. Oh, also, it did recommend I'm using the yarn that it was um, created for, which is the Cory Worsted. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm not very original. I'm original with my hair, but not with my sweater color choices. I'm doing the Amy Gilles uh, color, colorway, which is very earthy colorway. Um, and it did suggest, sorry, it did suggest that I alternate skeins because of potential pooling, but I didn't, and it's totally fine. And I don't think, maybe it wasn't even because of pooling, maybe because one, it isn't the same mm -hmm. um, lot, lot, but maybe one um, skein will look a different color when you mm -hmm. start a new one, but it doesn't at all. Like, and really, this is the only... The sleeves in the back are the only right, solid part. Right, only the part. sleeves in the back are the only solid part. Right. So I love that. So last night, I really wanted to have some color work done before this video. So last night at whatever, I cast it on and did the ribbing uh, for the front. And then at 11 p.m., I started doing bobbins. And I mean, I haven't done intarsia in 30 years since I did the dinosaur sweater, I don't think. And that was super basic. I mean, just a few colors. So I'm making not really bobbins but just these little butterfly things which is how I learned to do it for the dinosaur sweater um so I have a few for mm -hmm. different colors mm -hmm. um Oop. 
and I had to Google how you how you figure out how much yarn you need, and I did the yarn wrapping around the needle thing. So sometimes for some of the parts, I only need four stitches in that color. So it's just a little piece of yarn. Um, some of them, um, I actually rewrote. The, the design was created to be to um, be knit in like a pastel colorway. So this is the chart. I don't know if you can really see it. I don't really want to take a picture of it because it's you know, like a copyrighted chart, but it's in these pastel colors, and I get really confused if I'm not using those specific colors. So as I did with my Orkney, I drew my own chart in my little knitter's planner, which I love, and um, and so it's very muted, but you can see my, my whole thing here, the dots for pearls. I mean, you can't really see it. I'll try to take a picture of it, but um, that worked for me, but as I was counting, oh, so this one here is all the same color and it goes all the way up. You do three whole chart repeats. So that's all one color. So I counted those stitches and it's basically a, um, a 1,008 stitches. <laughs> and so that's why this is such a big butterfly. So that will go for the whole, all the way up, That's that one section. But the rest of them, they have like frames around them and, and some of them are, you know, they range from 1,008 stitches to four stitches. So I made all my little bobbins. I started doing it. Um, it was so late at night, and I was just messing everything up. Oh, Pearl's going out to go potty. <laughs> Bye, Pearl! Um, so, it was just not working. I also, um, oh, there was a mistake. I think there's a mistake in the pattern. I usually just think I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. Um, but when you start the color work, you finish the rib and you start the color work, um, there's a... Um, um, what's it called, like a panel of the Mariah, this color, along each side. So you do, what it said was, it always says slip one stitch first, then knit 13 stitches, and then start the chart. And then when you finish the chart, then knit 13 more stitches, and, and, or, and well, knit 14 stitches. But on this side, I had the 13 plus 1 was 14, and that side I had 12. Mm. So it was off-center. And I don't think that was intended to be off-center. It should have been 13 and 13. And I had the right amount of stitches. So then I thought, oh, I'll fudge it somehow. And then, I don't know, I was just getting frustrated. So then I thought, well, let me rip the intarsia out and go back and recenter it. And then I did that. And then when I ripped back to the rib, because it's two by two rib, then the stitches were all like this. And I just, <laughs> you know what? I just ripped the whole thing out. I got so frustrated. And then I thought about it all night, and I didn't sleep. Oh, no. No, seriously. So um, when you emailed me at 2 a.m.? <laughs> <sighs> yes. And so, anyway, so I recasted it on this morning. I think because also I was in a hurry. I really wanted to have some of the intarsia done for mm -hmm. today, but it's not. So um, I'm having, like, a low-grade anxiety. I've had a low-grade anxiety all day long because I want to love this project. And right now I'm, I'm getting really intimidated by the intarsia. Mm -hmm. So I started, actually, I started, um, I messaged Sylvia Watts Cherry and I said, hey, I'm starting the intarsia. Um, I'm going to talk about it today in a video. Do you have any tips and tricks? She said she doesn't use bobbins because they get in the way. Mm -hmm. um, also, like you'll finish one diamond and then there will be two rows of a different color and then another diamond of the same color. So I didn't know... Should I? Oh, Pearl's back. <laughs> so I didn't know, is it okay to carry that right. yarn up two rows? Mm -hmm. I think it is. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I just, I, I'm on a really steep learning curve here. So if you have any, any intarsia tips, any intarsia ideas, okay. I've watched a few videos. I know to twist. Like what's, what I found hard is you can find a million videos about socks, mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can find videos about basic intarsia. Mm -hmm. I know how to twist mm -hmm. at the beginning, mm -hmm. but those like a little bit more advanced, there are so many colors. Like in some of these rows, mm -hmm. I'll have I'll have one bobbin, two bobbins, three bobbins, four bobbins, five bobbins, six bobbins, seven bobbins, eight bobbins. Um, nine times, it repeats three times across, nine, 27, and then the panels on the side, 29 bobbins. Oh my goodness. Um, of all different sizes. <laughs> um, so, I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little, I'm feeling anxious right now just talking about it. I love this sweater, and I want to love knitting it, but, I mean, yeah, I'm going to finish it because that's what I do, <laughs> but right now, I would love Persevere. any, 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 any tips and tricks. I mean, yeah, so... Take a deep breath. breath. <laughs>
Okay. Just knitting. And I, this is the thing. I'm a project knitter. I want to wear it. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not in love with process. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it doesn't float my boat. I just want it finished. And right now, it feels like it's never going to be finished. So that's that. That's my Amina. I think that's all I wanted to talk about with that. <laughs> oh, and you talked about your socks. I did. So yeah. I'm done with my okay. projects. So I also have socks. But you'll notice they're on. They're no longer two at a time. You separated them. I separated them. So these are on my trusty magic loop and these are on, and this was a little bit of a splurge. So I had so, there were so many comments about people who had the little, the Chagu mini, the shorties, the, I don't even know what it's called. I actually have it here. This little set. So I just broke down and splurged and bought this. So this is a set of tiny circular needles, Mm -hmm. tiny needles from size zero to size three, maybe US three. Yeah. US zero to US size three. Oh my goodness. Those are itty bitty. (laughs) So those are needle tips. Yeah. So they're two inch tips and three inch tips. Wow. That's crazy. And so we took the five inch cable. I put on the three inch tip on the right hand side and the two inch tip on the left hand side, which gave me a 10 inch circular needle. And it's, it's actually working out pretty well. So I'm kind of committed to, and everyone said in the comments, now don't give up after a few rows, like definitely stick with it. So I've definitely, I've knit a couple inches on these tiny circulars. So nice. yeah, I'm, I'm liking it. Good I don't know you. if I like it as much as Magic Loop. <laughs> I'm kind of committed at this point. There's so, problems. and I do have my little stitch marker and they're both at the, at row 50. So I know exactly how long my socks are. So I'm feeling very, very nice. happy about that. Good. Yeah. So I'm going to put, I'm going to put in a heel flap and a gusset in these socks, but I do have one more sock tip that I really wanted to share with you. And I'll do that after our break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we might run out of time, but by the way, um, Pearl hasn't actually come into the video today. I keep talking about Pearl, but if this is your first video watching us, there's a yarn shop dog here. Yeah. And her, is, her, she, is it a yeah. girl? Uh-huh. Her name is Pearl. So mm-hmm. it's she's she, a big dog. She's a big dog. Yeah. She's, she's adorable. Beautiful. And she yeah. goes to doggy daycare next door, mm-hmm. but it closes or something. So she mm-hmm. comes in here. So you might hear Pearl sometimes. <laughs> so I have one more sock tip. And Yay. this came to me after, I think I was just mentioning to a friend that we were doing a sock tips and tricks. And oh, I was probably complaining about knitting two at a time socks. So she sent me a picture of her current two at a time socks on like size one chow goose, one, one needle magic loop. That's what I mean to say. So she sent me a picture of her ball of yarn. She had one ball of yarn instead of two, like I have, and she was pulling from the center of the ball and from the outside of the ball. And she threaded her yarn through a button, through the holes in a button, so it keeps the yarn from spinning up on itself. That's so brilliant. And I thought, oh, man, I would like to try that. But my yarn was already connected, so I couldn't do it. But when I do the heel flaps, I'm going to try to do that. What so, a great idea. Yeah. That won't help so me with my excited. intarsion nightmare. But, <laughs> but actually, um, I did ask Felicia and Karen if I should, oops, if they had bobbins. I don't own bobbins. So I might try these. I might buy these and try them, and then I can let people know. But yeah, so that, you don't need that for the socks two at a time. But no, yarn management. Eek. Yeah. <laughs> so, so favorite things. Yeah. Um, so mine has to do with Perfect Blend Yarn Yarn and Tea Shop, which I went to a couple weekends ago. Love that shop. If you're in the Saugerties area. You should definitely go. Every time I'm up north and I, I'm on my way home, it's kind of where I stop and buy souvenir yarn. And um, I think a lot of people go there during New York Sheep and Wool because it's the closest mm. yarn shop to Rhinebeck. And it's definitely a destination. Like, there's other stuff to do there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Hudson Valley Dessert Company. Mm-hmm. Amazing. And then there's a really great bookshop. And, of course, the lighthouse. You have to go to the lighthouse. Um, but a new favorite thing. Actually, I fell in love with this yarn a year ago we were in there. And it, it has the Perfect Blend label on it. Honestly, I didn't even Those ask. Those must weigh 200 grams. Those are, or 150 grams. They're 660 yards. 660 yards, yeah. 100% alpaca I'm, I'm from I'm very curious. So when you go Peru, home, put those on your scale. <laughs> um, it doesn't say how much it weighs, right? No, it doesn't. I looked. Um, but I got these three colors, and I'm, I asked Mayor. I've just been obsessing with these for a year, wanting to buy them. And um, I asked Mary, the owner of Perfect Blend, and she suggested knitting the cyan sweater designed by Elizabeth Doherty. 
And it's, um, I think like a slip stitch collar work sweater and it has a very deep yoke, but I think I'm going to do the entire thing. I saw a picture, a project picture of the entire thing with the collar work. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, a little bit more positive ease and I'm really excited. I think this will be my main color and then I'll alternate these two. I think the original sweater only has two colors, mm -hmm. but I think I'll somehow alternate these two, um, for like a really muted. And it's a circular yoke. I think so. yes, yeah. yes, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, so I bought the pattern, and actually, when after I bought the pattern, I told Jana, and she has the pattern already in her queue. So we were like, maybe we should do a knit along, but it just um, and we have friends who've suggested we do a knit along. Somebody suggested we do a ranunculus along, <laughs> but we haven't really participated in that many knit alongs. So let let us know if you're interested in something like that. And I think at first we wouldn't pick a specific project. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could do like. Um, a, a new new technique knit along mm -hmm. or um, or a sweater along or and I need to figure out Ravelry groups before we do any oh yeah because so. we would need a Ravelry group and yeah. it would be nice if we had somebody to help moderate it I don't even know how this works I've right. heard of those things right um, actually the knit along I did for the sea spray hat I could not figure out how to get into the <laughs> Ravelry group so I never joined the knit along group because I I could not figure it out mm -hmm. I can edit videos but I can't figure it's nice out. because people can post pictures there yeah yeah Oh, I know. Maybe, maybe we could do like in the spring, heading towards summer, we could do a sock along or a, a knit along for socks because mm -hmm. they're so small when you're knitting in the summer. Mm -hmm. And then maybe in the fall, we could do a sweater along. Yeah. A sweater knit along. Yeah. That would be so fun. It would be. <laughs> Yay. That's a great idea. And let us know if you'd like to all knit the same sock or if you just want to knit any sock. Yeah. Yeah. Like what your favorite things about knit alongs are. Cause right. We really, I, I just think I haven't joined them because I just already know what I want to knit and it's not what they're offering. So anyway. Okay. So those are my favorite things. Fav uh, perfect blend yarn and tea shop when you're in that area and this beautiful yarn that they have and they sell there and it has their label on it, the perfect blend. So I'm assuming it was made for their shop. It is amazing. It's so soft. It's so soft. <laughs> That's going to be so, one warm sweater. What's your favorite thing? Okay. So my favorite thing, I had a hard time choosing my favorite thing between the book I'm reading and um, oh something I saw on someone's podcast and then I was scrolling through Instagram so I decided my favorite thing this week is Thea Coleman's new pattern called Epernay and Epernay must be the name of a cocktail because I think all of her sweaters are named after cocktails so I don't really drink cocktails yeah. so <laughs> I started know. her hard cider so that is in our is that maybe will come out yet the whips and UFOs no it's coming out next okay. before this okay so in our whips and UFOs video I have started a hard cider also by Thea Coleman which is another beautiful sweater so this sweater is it's cabled it's textured it's got a boat neck it's knit from the bottom up yeah mm -hmm. and the arm um, separate from the sleeves and then separately to the shoulders and joined at the shoulders and then picked up stitches uh, for the sleeves and the neckline and oh, it is fun. in Cory Worsted, which mm -hmm. Kim is using mm -hmm. for her Amina sweater, but it's in a very special colorway, which is this beautiful dark green, moody um, <gasps> oh. yarn named Yona, after but Yona spelled. Haitala, spelled J-O-N-N-A, -N -N which is my name, um, but after uh, Yona Haitala, who is the editor-in-chief of Lina Magazine. So this is her favorite color, I guess. So if I lived in Finland, I'd be Yona, but I live here, so I'm Jana. Uh, yeah, and my parents called me Jonna from birth, so yeah, there was no Yona. They didn't even know that that was a thing. So <laughs> I love your name. Well, my name Kim in Scandinavia is a man's name, so oh really? Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I was going to just mention quickly my my the favorite thing I didn't choose. And why, <laughs> well, why were Go we talking it. about it? We were talking about Intarja. Mm -hmm. Anyway, her name's Bella from Hundred Acre Wool Podcast, and she is using Intarja to knit the Anne Boleyn jacket by Alice oh, Starmore wow. and it's absolutely stunning and I had a hard time choosing for my favorite thing so that's I'm going to have to look that up I don't remember yeah. what it looks like yeah yeah it's gorgeous all of those designs I, don't oh, think... I think we were talking about um something difficult that I thought you know I couldn't make the Amina or I couldn't make such and such because oh, okay. I just didn't have the expertise yeah but you can I'd be tempted to try that one let's do it it's so beautiful just do it Oh, I just want to thank uh, Felicia and Karen for letting us film here yes. because it's always such an event. It's so beautiful, and we're going to do a shop tour at some point so that you all can see how beautiful this store is. We try to choose a different corner to sit in every yeah. time. There's so many beautiful little nooks and crannies. Oh, my goodness. And so it's always such an event. It's 
such a special time mm -hmm. and I really look forward to mm -hmm. it. So. We feel so welcome here and it's been really, it's been really fun. It's yeah. been fun to not always have to do it in our house. Right. I just think it's just bright and happy and cheery. So mm -hmm. I love yeah. it. So thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and hit the notifications if you'd like to be notified. And we do release videos every Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank you to Kim who spends hours editing and, and always gets them out on time. So thank you. <laughs> and don't forget to use our hashtag, show Kim and Jana. We do That's been great. look through it. It's really fun. Yeah. And you know what is annoying me about it though? And I don't know if I can change it. Hmm. It doesn't show the most recent thing at the top. They get all mixed up. Is it because the date the picture was taken? I don't know. I think it's an Instagram algorithm thing. It's so weird. So I'll so go to the actual hashtag, and then it'll show the grid of all the pictures, and so I make sure that I didn't miss anything. They're in all different order. So yeah. it's if we missed yours, I apologize, but I have to literally go back to the very beginning, and then all of a sudden there's pictures that I didn't see. Right. Ugh, so yeah. annoying. But it's been really it's fun free. to see what everyone is everyone's working on. Yes, I love it. It's yeah. really, really amazing. We continue and to comment. The funniest questions. thing is when people take pictures and they have like us on the screen and we're in the oh, picture. Oh, I know. <laughs> so <laughs> weird. Oh, I go show my husband. Oh my gosh, we're in this picture. <laughs> oh, <laughs> In dear. another country, no less. That's so funny. Yeah. It's really funny. Okay. I, we, I got a comment. Um, and I don't know if she was speaking French or... Maybe she requested subtitles or something, but I responded. Spanish. Mm -hmm. No, that was a Spanish one. Oh, okay. I responded in French to another viewer. Wow. But you can respond in German. I can. I have. Yeah. I have responded to certain things in German. Yeah. And the person asked, um, do you speak German or are you using Google Translate? Uh -huh. And I said both. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and I would have to say the same thing. Yeah. 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 I, I've... Anyway, I, I don't want to Google get on that Translate topic. To, We're ending to the chat. video now, so yeah. I don't want to start my whole can of worms <laughs> about how I love to speak German. But um, I take German right now, so... Um, yeah, it's fun. I love it, but I uh, by no means am perfect at speaking it or writing it. So <laughs> sometimes if I want to say something and I don't know exactly how to say right. it, I'll check Google, Google Translate. Right. And that's not even always right. Google no. Translate isn't always right. Yeah. Like, oh, I know. I wanted to write in a st Instagram story, thanks for the mention. Mm. And a lot of times in German, they'll use the English word. Mm. So... The word was it? I can't remember. I'm not going to guess. But um, the person I was answering, I told her, or that I was reposting, I said, I wanted to write this in German. So I said, How do you say that? So she told me. So now I know. Oh, nice. I can go back to hers. But anyway, Our so viewers are a wealth of information. They are, seriously. So, so, so fun. So, yeah, thank you so much. So much. For watching us. We're so grateful. We really have so much fun doing this. Um, it, it just is a highlight of my week recording videos with you. Thank you. <laughs> Mine too. Yay. <laughs> Soon it's going to be the gym next week. I know. I have to get back to the gym. Oh, gosh. Anyway, ugh, that's another story. Let's end on a happy note. Yes. <laughs> Let's not talk about Thank the gym. Thank you so much. Yep. Thanks. Until next time. Yep. Bye. Okay, my hair is crazy. I think also I just don't like this. Oh, hair. I have gym hair, so. No, it's beautiful. I was like, do I need to wash it? No. Now I have the buzz. True. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Occupational hazard. Yes. Fuzz in the nose. Hopefully the phone rings. It's just another outtake. Uh, oh, I hear dogs barking from the doggy daycare. <laughs> it's what keeps me up at night. <laughs> Seriously, I wake up in the middle of the night. What are we going to say? Wow, my sweater looks ginormous sitting here. Should I wear something else? too late. <laughs> oh, well. That's how I wanted it, right? Yep. Okay. Still alone, it's going to make it right